Now, when I say we, I don't mean us. I mean we when I'm talking about me. You see, it's not just me sitting here talking into the camera lens. I, meaning my physical body, is really a super organism. Now, I'm not bragging. This is just fact. The Human Microgenome Project of the National Institutes of Health is telling me that my body's human cells are outnumbered by other organisms 10 to 1. And if we look at it from the perspective of genetic material, which is really the basis of life, then I'm outnumbered by a number more like 100 to 1. So I'm definitely a minority, and I'm a superorganism all in one. This is stunning and humbling to think that my health is probably dependent on a delicate ecology that scientists have only recently started to identify and they really don't even begin to understand it. This is why I feel good trying to live my life in touch with nature and eating a traditional diet. My goal is to avoid the risks of mindless consumption that our modern culture does. And what we do is we sterilize everything, which removes traditional components, and then we chock it full with new and unusual chemicals. Our physiology is infinitely complex, but now we must add on the complexity of the trillions of other life forms that are living with us. This probably tells us why a premature newborn has a higher mortality rate the longer they've been on antibiotics. Other studies have suggested that the more diversity we have in our microbiome, the healthier and more disease resistant we are. No, they want us to eat sterilized food and then get vaccinated instead. It's better for the economy. There's an all-out assault on our microbiome from the medical system that loves to prescribe antibiotics. A small study done at Stanford University using microgenome sequencing showed that one course of the common antibiotic, ciprofloxacin, resulted in a major shift in the patient's flora. And this flora shift never recovered to baseline for the full duration of the study. And they've also done studies in rats, and they've shown that alterations in gut flora can cause obesity. Now, could antibiotics be part of the cause of our obesity epidemic? How is our microbiome impacted by pasteurizing, like pasteurizing milk, irradiating our foods, cooking all our foods, microwaving our foods, spraying everything with antiseptics. Did our creator plan that humans would declare a war on unseen microorganisms that are actually part of us and may contribute far more to our health and well-being than we could imagine? What impact do chemical toxins have? If they are bad for us, they might be bad for our microbiome. Most genetically modified corn and other plants, but corn, 90% of the U.S. corn is genetically modified, and this corn produces a toxin that kills insects. Now, it probably pokes big holes in our microbiome, and we don't have any idea how this might affect our health in the long term. Now, this may be part of the reason why we have more and more degenerative diseases. A report I read stated that Nine out of 10 Americans that die this year, the cause will be heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and lung disease, all degenerative diseases. Now, science is slowly discovering the design of our creator, that biodiversity is good. So what are you doing to keep your personal biodiversity? Let me tell you what I do. Every day I have raw milk, raw fruits and vegetables. I have fermented cod liver oil a fermented beverage, a fermented dairy, a pinch of soil. I usually kiss my dog and I kiss my wife. Not in that order though. Please comment on how you get your daily dose of organisms. For more information to help you stay healthy, please subscribe to this channel. This is Dr. Gerhauser. Thanks for watching.